afternoon. First university established in Australia in 1852. First university in the world to admit um, female student. Um, we have over 300,000 alumni across the world and today we are educating more than 60,000 students. They are taught by 7,500 um, academic staff and supported by 8,000 professional staff, I'm one of them. Um, our recent generation <coughs> of external interest system implementation um, will come to light. In fact, on the university's book, there are more than 26,000 uh, staff members in the forms of um, permanent, casual, um, affiliates, um, contractors, um, non-pay employees, so our university is a big place and with its um, very complex settings with affiliated foundations, clinics, schools, um, what, whatever is out there making the uh, record keeping compliance a very challenging task. I mean archives and records management services. We are under the university's legal and compliance portfolio Amongst us, apart from legal services, we also have uh, internal audit and risk management, the uh, trusts office and policy management unit. So we um, consider ourselves very lucky to be part of this portfolio of the university because we have received much needed support in the past and I hope this situation is going to continue. My team consists of 11.2 full-time equivalent records officers. On one hand, we deliver projects to do with system integration, with business system, capturing electronic records automatically. We tailor, design, implement um, record keeping solutions. We also work with ICT on the business system decommissioning and migration of records if need be. On the operation side, we still do a hell of a lot of uh, traditional records management services. We run the help desk uh, to support our users. We maintain universities' corporate registers. Um, we do record sentencing and disposal. Although um, since end of last year, we start to curb our sentencing of records on that to do with people because uh, the university is considering joining the National Redress Scheme. So we have to put the records destruction on hold for a bit. Um, me, apart from wearing the records manager's hat, I also hold the proper officer title for the university. Um, so being the proper officer, I handle the subpoenas and warrants, police requests and third party requests for personal information. By now you probably wonder what do we use? We use Microfocus Content Manager number one. Um, would it be okay if I refer that as trim? It's just easier on my tongue when I say something. It's just too long. Um, we adopt TRIM back in 2000 and we commenced our electronic record keeping journey in 2006. Um, by 2011, we have reached tipping point where um, more than 70 percent of our records are electronically captured. Um, last year, we so on average, we're capturing about four or five million electronic records. Um, so that's going to, I think it's just getting more and more each year. The electronic record keeping journey at the University of Sydney could be described by three words. They're my three words. Incremental, persistent and ongoing. Incremental, um, I meant that we've made many achievements in increments over a long period of time. Um, we did not take a big band approach, rather um, keep doing it bit by bit, um, not give up. And um, um, 
and uh, just keep refining, adjusting, and improving. It took us five and six years before we reached the tipping point. Persistent, uh, I mean, there have been several attempts to get rid of trim over the years. While this effort was unwanted obstacles in the past, having overcome them, I felt like um, I should be thankful because they gave me the opportunities. And I think the feelings being on the edge gives us strength, uh, opportunity to grow from strength to strength to a point uh, now that we are using record keeping system to perform enterprise system capabilities. This is prevalent in the Declaration of External Interest system we've developed last year. A similar system was developed by another department five years ago and was linking from day one. Um, we've been asked last year to rebuild the system and we of course use trim. We deliver on time um, and uh, $250,000 less than the original trouble system. We not only improved the system on many levels, um, we also allowed the system to make a decoration on uh, gifts and outside earnings. Ongoing, I personally believe there are um, significantly more record keeping job to be done. Um, there are immediate needs for us to look at some of the high value, high risk records at the university and um, there, there's, um, we need to develop smarter solutions to overcome new challenges as they arrive or emerge. <coughs> Whilst over the last 10 years we have established a variety of tools and applications to help us to overcome record keeping challenges. Today I like to focus on talking about record, um, sorry, trim workflow. Wikipedia defines a workflow consists of an orchestrated and repeatable pattern of business activity enabled by the systematic organization of resources into process that transform materials, provide services or process information. Trim workflow basically does that. We initially looked into trim workflow back in 2010 as part of a project to um, on managing the uh, correspondence in the Vice Chancellor's office. Um, however, the first two systems hit the production environment and gone live in 2012 was the uh, special consideration system for Faculty of Health Science and PhD student annual progress review system for Faculty of Engineer and IT, and the many others followed. Currently, we're supporting more than 20 business processes in the university, help them doing their business in an automated way, whilst taking care of their record keeping obligations. I didn't have enough space to go down, so that's enough. Um, this 20 business process coming to us with very similar issues need a solution and they're looking for the same goals and um, so here are some of them. They're all about complex process across different departments, faculties and business units. The problem is that when people keeping paper records especially, they or sometimes people put in their own outlook, they don't really systematically um, look after them and they keep their own sets of records. All you need is one department or some people leave the organisation, the university will be left without any adequate records to defend their decision making. So workflow, trim workflow allows all parts of the university to work towards and contribute to a set of common records. I see that as a real and complete source of truth.
they're all about seeking consistencies on decision making and process handling. The true workflow system now has earned its reputation for being the instrument for uh, accurate application of university's policies and procedures. Um, when I developed the PhD Any Progress Review System for Faculty of Engineer, um, they told me that um, they had struggled to find or uh, to keep track of where things are because students says I gave to my supervisor. The supervisor said, well, I did not receive it. Or he might say, she might say, I gave to the um, faculty or uh, the school administrator. So no one knows where things are. There were seven different ways to handle this PhD and progress review amongst five schools because they've got seven different administrators. So after the trim workflow implementation, we follow one way, the university's way. They all have a desire to see case through, not leaving them half done. The workflow can tell you exactly where things are, where the bottlenecks are, and when things got stuck, what are the culprits? Another commonality is the need to know prior case history we have been able to support this functionality from day one for Faculty of Health Science special considerations. As the uh, faculty administrator trying to keep account of how many times a student could claim the need to go to their grandma's funeral. <laughs> Nowadays, it's common in the workplace where people are just too busy to cope with their work Record keeping is often an afterthought or seen as a burden. Automatic and adequate record keeping brings relief and the benefits to both the business and to us, the record keepers. As you can see before, more than half of our process with the half of the process we support are to do with issues of staff and the student. So the uh, the case documents are of highly sensitive nature. So managed um, secure access and authorised access is a must. Our workflow system not only can manage the case documentation from day one when the workflow is created, we can also, based on different scenarios, we can invite add people into the access to the records and when they finish doing that part, we can take the access away. And whilst in the same workflow process, if the case goes through this way, only this may, you know, the certain people can access the case for this scenario and can be different from another pathway. So it's very flexible. There's also common need for a user-friendly solution for academic staff. The first two workflow system <coughs> We involved 800 academic staff and they didn't even know they were using Trim because all the actions sent to the Outlook, they just do make decisions, provide their comments, provide their explanation in Outlook and when that message is being sent, Trim does the um, capture of those email messages into workflow. So very little effort required for them. Now I'm going to deep dive into an example in the hope of giving you um, some insight into the background and the design of these systems. I'm sure um, some of our university colleagues, you probably heard mymaster.com. Um, that was uh, a media exposure of a ghost writing company that provide essay writing for overseas students, international students. Um, and uh, there were 61 University of Sydney students being identified to have used this service. And ICAC is calling universities to do something to prevent international students from cheating. Um, so universities' reputations on the line. In July 2015, Univers University of Sydney formed Vice-Chancellors 
um, academic misconduct and plagiarism task force. And um, after having, having um, interviewed 16 faculties, they produce a report. Whilst under-reporting was a common theme amongst 16 faculties, they found 10 out of 16, 10 faculties are not really following the university policies, which is very bad. Um, there's only seven faculties they consider keeping records, but some of them basically kept in someone's emails or Excel document. I would not consider that as adequate record keeping. And only three of them use trim system to keep case records. The task force also found there were two faculties doing reasonably well. One being the business school, um, who employs five, six administrators. They um, kept a paper, state of art paper records in the room. Um, it worked like a, a machinery. And they also found that Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences use trim workflow. And whilst the, uh, the um, faculty is slightly larger than the business school, they only need one system, one um, policy administrator. And uh, they found records is easy to access. You can report them many different ways. Um, the task force was very mindful of the resource implication if they were to induce changes. Um, so they decided in their report, they, amongst five recommendations, they um, recommended a, an accessible, searchable and complete record keeping facility across the university. And it also f um, further recommended a true workflow design for Faculty of Arts and Social Science be further developed to uh, and implement across all universities because they, they found the student um, cheating in one faculty and then when they go and study in another faculty, they get a clean slate. So now it's going to be across the university. And if you found once, second time, so third time, you may not be that lucky. Whilst workflow, true workflow can do a lot of task routings and things like that, um, it requires a bit of uh, um, help. Um, and it needs to be launched by electronic documents. So we've designed true web form to, as a mechanism to um, allow people to report or refer a case and um, I'm very, um, I like to uh, show this form to you because I think whilst looking simple but it, the trim web form is doing a lot of smart things in the background. So this is me logging in. Now the, this um, True web forms behind university's authentication system. As soon as I put my unique and password, um, the, system, the, the true web form already know who I am. And you will then look up to trim and see if I'm registered as a personal location. If not, you will automatically create one using the information um, retrieved from university's authentication system. There's some default values on the form already, um, so saving people have to type in because most 90% of the time people report cases from current year, but they can also type 2018 or type 2017 if they need to because the policy allows for retrospective reporting for up to two years. Um, the next most important piece of information is, I'm sorry, the error is a little bit up, should be down, which is eight digits in the study code. Again, TRIM will perform lookup to the unit study system, the learning, teaching, learning management system of the university, as well as payroll system, A, to fetch it, the uh, unit study name, and also um, understand which faculty administer this unit of study. Faculty in this case is very important um, because there are some limitations, there's an uh, access requirement where cases that um, by each faculty can only be by, uh, 
be accessed by each faculty's administrator, only decision maker they can see cases across the whole, fac uh, whole university. So we had to use grab the faculty name for us to manage access. So that's a, we use that faculty code to limit access. And then the, uh, the payroll system will return the relevant unit study coordinator. And we use that information again to check in trim for trim location because later on we will send them email messages, keep them informed. Um, the next important piece of information is student IDs. Um, initially we provide one and I have people from business school say we, we, can, we, we often report tens um, multiple students. Can your system do multiple system referral? So leave with me, let me have a look. So we can do we can do up to eighty, but I think the faculty thinks it's too much. Eighty is too much. So we limit it to twenty, but it's possible. So when someone put SID in there, student ID, Trim again look up to the student admin system and grab their um, student details, their demo demographic information, and their um, enrollment status. And all this information gets written to the web form, output form. This will save the decision maker as well as the, the policy administrator. Um, later on, when they receive the case, they have to log into the Sydney student again. No, they don't. Everything's served on the platter for them. They can just reference the um, Web this, the information we grabbed from the city student then will be used for statistical information, um, giving our um, academic board some insight. This form also allows for further attachments, and once they're ready, they click submit button. Once the web form has been submitted, trim web. Uh, True Workflow Service will automatically create a case folder and render a HTML, HTML version of this web form. Treat, uh, make that initiating document kick off a workflow. We auto assign a lot of tasks already knowing who the who are the case initiator, like me, that's in this case me, and who's the unit study coordinator, who are the alleged student. They all receive emails then we track. So doing a lot of smart. To design a workflow, I often first familiarize with university policy and procedures and uh, sometimes relevant legislation. Once I've done my homework, I go and talk to people in the faculty. In this case, even though I was quite familiar with then the old policy, and knowing how they work, I still uh, organised 10 workshops with 16 faculty, um, business owners and stakeholders um, because I believe this is a great opportunity for, for me to meet with them and uh, introduce myself because I'm the one going to introduce the change. I better get to know them first. And then um, often through the discussion, I gather their insights and sometimes the pitfall they tell me. So I pay a, a big attention to what they say. I also pick in the crowd who can help me and who might can leverage as a champion and who might be having a bit of a problem with something I'm going to do. Um, I sometimes I think half the people out there, they just want like to be informed and have, a, uh, have an opportunity for them to say what they think and to make sure their voice has been heard. So I believe I, um, my hard work of consulting with business stakeholders always paid a dividend. Once I chart out the business processes on a piece of paper, I then translate to the true workflow map, not as pretty as your <laughs> <laughs> data model, <laughs> but people don't need to see it, it's behind the scenes. Um, and don't be afraid. Here, that looks like it's complex, but it's very simple. It's because only 20% of the steps here are, need to be done by human. The rest are the systems, routing tasks, send the emails, 
um, doing a document assembly because we provide mechanism for case data to be merged with document templates so the administrator they don't need to type up a letter click of a button the decision letter is pretty much 90 percent there manage access alternatively contain records in with student files staff files. so doing a lot of things behind the scene it's just happened ticking away in the background so people don't need to see this that's just for me I heard someone talk about trim workflows in only linear. That's not true. Trim workflow can be as complex, as sophisticated as you want it to be. This is a, a basically a table of the stakeholders in this particular system and how they engage with the system. As you can see, uh, the trim web form uh, already done a lot of smart work. Uh, so things are just happening in the background. Um, when the um, uni university's process often are cyclical, so like um, the education, um, academic dishonesty and plagiarism case only happens once or twice a semester when students need to submit some assignment. So academics, they are often, when, they, when the wave comes again, they think, what am I supposed to do? Um, so what I did was um, I provide instructions in the email sent to them saying explain to them why they received this email and what they are uh, required, expect to do and, um, and guide them along the process. So the task force really liked this feature and they, they said may help to develop a workflow using the university's existing record keeping software, TRIM. The system removes the need for each academic staff member to be aware of procedure in detail, while ensure policy consistency and procedure fairness for students. So I was thrilled to hear that such a simple feature has been useful and earned much appreciation by academic staff. This is the case documents. Um, that's what get me excited. Um, so the workflow, sorry, the workflow service create folder as I as I mentioned earlier that when you um, when someone launch launch that web form, and this is the web form that I displayed earlier now being rendered as web form. It outlined what the case was and all the student information being written to the web form so people don't have to log in to other, to other systems. This is a prior history report. So that basically Trim will do a prior case search and grab all the relevant cases of prior history case. These are the attachments submit at the lodgement. They're because they're required to attach student assessment, turn it in reports. Um, they, the unit study coordinator need to um, prove they give student adequate instruction in terms of how to complete that um, assignment. So those evidence all being uploaded um, by the, the faculty administrators. <coughs> This is a um, decision letter that sent to communicate to the student. As you can see, that's an email with a little attachment. Um, this is a, a decision making because, uh, sorry, I had to uh, wipe out some people's names so that he's, that's why it looks a bit scattered. Um, so as you can see here, there says response from blah, blah, blah. That's basically an academic decision maker made a decision in Outlook and later on being captured by Trim. And this, the, every step of the way, the alleged student being kept informed of the progress, uh, what they need to do. And when the workflow has been completed, we have a complete audit history of how cases have been started and who was decision making, when, how long, all sorts of information written on this order file. Um, as this is the dashboard, 
that uh, we, it's a visual presentation of the data from the case handling, from the student information, from unit study system. Um, basically, um, it provides um, the university uh, management a very good insight into what's going on. When you clicked on each faculty bar, so up the top there's this instant by faculty, each bar when you click on it, they've got their own faculty snapshot of the, the dashboard. So the chair of the academic board said that this dashboard provides good insight into the educational integrity issues at the university, the trends, the opportunities which the university has never had before. So, in summary, this is my solution design for the academic misconduct and plagiarism workflow system. The solution contain, consists of three components. The true web form behind Unity authentication, replacing paper form, provide smarts, and automatically collecting necessary information from various enterprise sources. True workflow is architecturally designed to serve policy and procedure, automatic routing of tasks, putting the right information right in front of the right people at the right time and guiding them along the process. It brings about consistency and transparency, adjust and manage security as required as the workflows, automatically capture records, Keep everyone informed on the case progress without having to do the actual hard work. The trim dashboard is a good visual snapshot of the cases at hand. Provides a good insight and overview of the situation. These three components with the foundation of good record keeping allows for consistent, complete and evidence decision making. And I often said to um, the, the business area that I work with, I said, this is what gets me in the morning, looking forward to coming to work every day. Finding workable solution to challenges and obstacles may be end of result deep, deeply satisfying. In 2017, I received Vice Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence for this work. Um, apparently, they have never given this award to professional staff. It's always the recipients, always academic staff. And whilst that was personally gratifying, I felt the significance of the award went further. As records professionals, uh, I'm sure you all appreciate much of our work is done behind the scene, and it's there. Uh, it, it's hardly. Um, and not always are valued by other parts of the, you know, uh, our organisation. However, that award felt like that um, that is a public acknowledgement of the hard work done by my team and I, and that uh, the uh, the importance of good record keeping has been recognised by the very highest level of the university. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you.